Hey guys, one of the most challenging and fun aspects of a woodworking workshop or a workshop is coming up with useful and efficient use of the space that you have and making it your own. For most, it's a constant evolution as new tools are added or upgraded and new ideas on how to be more efficient are, are utilized. Perhaps the most common at-home workshop location, it's a garage. And the semi, just kind of semi-finished space usually has pretty high ceilings, access to utilities, great ventilation by way of garage doors, right? To create the MFT, MFT style grid on top of the station, we use these UJK Puff Guides, MK2 I think it was, um, got it off of the website, and it's a neat system. It uses a pair of high precision straight edges and rules, rulers and indexing holes and some basic Pythagorean theory math and allows you to get dead accurate and square with your 20 millimeter uh, holes, your MFT style grid, without the use of a CNC machine. One keystone tool that uh, pretty much found in any workshop is the miter saw. So some of the key features to consider when selecting a miter saw for your workshop is blade size, front rail design, because we want that space saving, and dust collection. The blade size is going to be primarily a factor to determine the size of stock you can cut. So a front rail design on a miter saw we like because it's efficient and it allows the saw to relatively sit flush against the wall, minimizing its use, uh, its footprint, and maximizing your space, basically. So for our build, we chose the Makita 12-inch LS1219L miter saw. It's corded miter saw, dual bevel sliding, compound miter saw with a large cut capacity. 12-inch um, blade, it can cut a 4 by 14 at 90 degrees, right? It's going to cut anything we need it to. The Makita saw features a 2 um, two steel rail sliding rail systems that's front mounted. So it offers that reduced footprint that I was talking about, and it does. It sits right up against the wall, and it's a real space saver. Makita has had a long legacy of finished carpentry and woodworking saws, and this saw does a great job at building out that legacy. With the saw selected and the dimensions known, we then built the table around the Makita saw. So we used that Ron Park um, smart station idea as inspiration. And we modified the plan so that to fit the saw into the workspace, the workbench. Some important dimensions when designing a drop-in miter saw station are the footprint of the saw. Clearly, the height of the saw's base and the arc of the swing when you when you're moving the the uh, angle, the the uh, yeah the angle basically. Ideally, you want your saw to lift um, to fit in as snug as possible while still allowing a little bit of free movement. The base of the saw should sit at or just barely above the station top workspace so that you can support work on both sides. And let's not forget dust collection. Active dust collection automatically configured to turn on when your miter saw trigger is pulled is a fantastic time saver and feature to have. While a miter station can be integrated into your shop's overall dust collection architecture, not everyone or every space can easily or cost effectively make that work, right? So for our miter stand, we elected to use a sp uh, spare shop vacuum attached to a miter, uh, the miter saw controlled with a um, uh, eye socket auto switch. This little unit is a great low tech solution that accepts a 120 plug from your saw and vacuum and it automatically turns on the vacuum each time the saw trigger is pulled. The last feature that I want to talk about here or incorporate into our miter saw station um, was a positive stop system. And you know, when you're making multiple cuts the exact same length, it's a great way to be accurate. It's a great way. It's, it's basically a stop block and it can be a huge time saver and really improve your repeatable accuracy of your cuts over time. So to accomplish this, you know, we set up um, Universal T-Track from Rockler and we made a pair of stop blocks from some spare uh, mahogany and we had laying around and some track hardware. The T-Track is a fantastic versatile solution that can be, it can be endless uses in the shop. And to mount the T-Track into our base, we just made a few passes with a router and a three quarter inch dado bit. Once the desired depth was achieved, we just put the track right into the, um, the, the, the dado and flush mounted, slightly less than flush. To continue with the theme of modularity, we also we elected to build our own router table that would cantilever off of one of the workbenches securely may, uh, and mate securely with the MFT holes. The heart of the router table is the Rockler Pro router lift and we basically we use a 2x4 piece of phenolic um, face birch plywood for the structure of the surface of the table. 
The phenolic coating provides a nice protective surface on the plywood and it can be cleaned and maintained low friction. It's just nice to work with. To install the router lift into the tabletop, we just basically used a pre-made router template uh, from Rockler to save time in setting, setting it up. But uh, using a handheld router and a pattern cutting bit, we removed a minimum amount of material to get that lift to just sit flush with the top of our table. Pretty straightforward, and we've done a video on how to do this in the past. In order to accommodate a fence for our router table, we went with the Rockler Pro router fence, and we had to add additional T-track to that as well. And you can use a, a handheld router, or you can use a table saw dado set. And I just happen to have my dado set in, so we use that. Um, now, um, I want to talk a little bit about mounting the router table to the woodworking tables. So, the, again, it, they make with these 20 millimeter holes that are cut in the same pattern using that PARF guide system that I mentioned earlier. And the, with the holes lined up, a pair of TSO PowerLock bench connector dogs can be securely mounted to cantilever our router table right off the bench. The power lock bench connectors are designed basically to insert into a pair of those overlapping three quarter inch thick material 20 millimeter holes and a locking lug at the bottom that can, it, it just locks in and, and flips out, can be tightened with a five millimeter um, wrench. Both tables that we built were designed to be lightweight and modular and they both are supported by a pair of sawhorses that are just hinged together. Uh, the sawhorses can be folded up, they can be transported or stored upright or down flat and even store in the table itself. To fully maximize the space available in our shop, we absolutely wanted to take advantage of overhead ceiling space as much as we could. Two sets of FlexiMount GL44B 4x4 lifts were installed uh, in the garage bays. Both workbenches had mounting hardware installed with turnbuckles and that allowed us to attach to the lift system and basically lay, raise the entire workbench up to the ceiling. The lightweight package design of these tables made it possible given that the lift has a, um, the flexi mount lift has a 300 pound capacity. The importance of the wheel cannot be understated enough and weighing in at 220 pounds with a powerful 1.5 horsepower motor uh, you know, and a nice set of easy lift caster wheels, the table saw, right? So you need a table saw that you can move around easily, but has enough power to cut through things. So both workbenches in our shop have been put on wheel carts so that we can move them around and roll them up to the table saw or, or move them as a, a, an assembly table. And the basic design for the cart, uh, again, can be found on Ron Pock's we uh, website. Some modifications to consider that we made on our benches were to change the leg heights so that, uh, as a result, the locking tab positions on the cart so that the tabletop would rest uh, just a few millimeters below our table saw and function as an outfeed. So either table can be an outfeed table. Um, let's talk a little bit about bench tools because some tools occupy the space between the too small to have their own pedestal or wheels and too large to mount on a wall. So with limited stationary benchtop space, we tried to keep the number of benchtop tools to a minimum. The two tools that we absolutely wanted to start with were a sander and thickness planer, which would sit on the table. But the, the rigid R4840 oscillating belt spindle sander, it's a newer model that, that is built off of the widely successful 4424 model, which I have. Um, has it's been around for years. The sanding head can be swapped between a compact belt sander and five different size spindles which are great. And having two in one tool like that, it's ultimately a great space saver. For the thickness planer, we also, uh, we went with the rigid line product and this time the R4850 13 inch portable planer. Don't do a lot of planing, but when we do, it's, it's just nice to have it. As, as we work around the workshop, we just think about efficiency. One of the main definitions of the word efficient is preventing wasteful use of a resource. In this case, the resource is space and particularly the volume that this three car garage with a nine foot ceiling provides. So by taking advantage of all the wall and overhead space efficiently, the, the garage can be maximized, right? So the, the garage space features some long, basically longitudinal beams separating the bays that support the main floor above us, the floor joists. If we built some floating shelf systems consisting of plywood and some suspended cables to just create an increased storage space. So, toolboxes, things that we don't often use, some stock we can put all up above. 
As far as modular storage, shop wall storage and layout is, is a topic deserving its own discussion, right? But um, there's a bunch of different ideas, opinions, and preferences on this. But one piece of sage advice is to keep in mind that nothing is permanent. And your, your opinions of where tools and, and, and things can go on the walls is likely to change. So having the flexibility to mount and remount should be a priority in a garage workshop. This garage was finished with plaster walls over 16 on center studs. So basically to make our wall storage flexible, we just, we installed half inch birch plywood along the walls and it increased the strength and flexibility of our mounting surfaces. So we were able to, well, we've already started to mount tools. So things like chisels and hand planes and screwdrivers and, and, and all kinds of stuff can be mounted. Um, I always like the way the tools look on the wall, like behind me here, it's almost like workshop art, but it's quick access too, right? We also think it just looks good in a workshop. Um, anchoring one wall in the shop is the newly released Packout Modular a Shop Storage from Milwaukee. Milwaukee's Packout line of storage has been out in the field for years now and several years, and it's finally evolved to include a line designed for the workshop or garage. The Packout Shop Storage system uses a series of mounting plates that they're designed to index together and they provide a solid mounting grid for existing and new Packout storage products. Having the ability to quickly mount, dismount, reorganize the storage wall, it's just been a great feature in addition to this garage shop. Um, and if you want more details on this system, we did a full review on Toolbox Buzz as well as a video on the, on the YouTube channel on Milwaukee Shop Storage. Um, check it out, see if it's right for your space. All right, I want to talk about a wall-mounted dust collector. So the importance of dust collection in your shop can't be overstated enough, right? So aside from the obvious mess that saws and sanding can create, the particulates in the air is in generating, getting in your lungs is what's hazardous. So having a centralized dust collection system with ductwork running across the space and hookups and dedicated tools might be the ultimate goal for your shop as you grow. But having a rigid ductwork and hoses running through your garage, uh, that could be a hindrance, right? So that's hence the modular design. So to get us started in this garage workshop, we elected to incorporate the Dust Right wall-mounted dust collector, and Rockler makes this, puts it out. It's a uh, 1250, uh, 1250 CFM unit. It's got some serious power, and you can you can actually plumb out pipes if you wanted to and, and, and build off of this. The system is designed to be uh, mounted to the wall. It uses a 12 amp, uh, 12 amps at 110 voltage, and it can plug into a regular wall outlet. And given the modular layout of the shop and the tools, we elected to start slow with a dust collection system and just a, a big four inch flexible hose, collapsible, quick connect system that we can plug and play. This way we can quickly and easily hook up our dust collection to the primary cutting tools, regardless of the configuration, wherever we put them in the, in the, in the room. Over time, and as preferred layouts are established, we intend to plumb some dedicated ductworks down those shelves we built uh, and maybe create some additional hookups there as well. Um, all right, final thoughts. We, we, we set out to accomplish three goals with this workshop. Create a kick-ass workshop that was modular, mobile, and efficient. Um, two, employ all the tricks and techniques that we knew to store tools efficiently and easily. And, and move them around easily. And three, keep the garage as viable for vehicle storage space, right? We wanted to keep a parking space for the cars. Not only did we do that, but we opened our eyes to going vertical storage as well with those flexi lift storage things and the shelves. Um, I think it's a genius idea being able to take your workbenches and store them and then lower them down because the workbenches take up a lot of room and four by eight, I mean, where are you gonna put a four by eight table? Slide it against the wall? We can't, the car won't fit. So um, that really opened our eyes with those, with those lifts. Great solution for a garage workshop. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. I'm Rob Robillard and we'll see you next time. Please consider supporting this channel. Like the video, leave a comment, but more importantly, subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you.